it's the boots, but mostly it's my cheat. You know that song? It's no, I it. don't. Hi, everyone. <laughs> No, yeah, that, was, Hi. that was you singing mostly it's my chi was how we started this live stream jamie my chi we have just learned from our guests today that my chi is messed up <laughs> now listen i want all of our listeners know that you are messed up and they didn't need to know that it was about the chi they knew already they know they know i'm a mess as it you know i just shouldn't have to be working on a computer did you just you know what I, go flying no no i just was laughing because i was about to start our theme song jamie and you were like you know and i was like this i was thinking well, how funny it would be if you were talking and i just went like this what? It's the show that nobody asked for, the only reason that we shower. If these ovaries could talk is live right now. I love Ooh. that stamp at the end. It's just the sound of the stamp is amazing. What sound? Hello, Russell. Stamp? Hi, Russell Farge. Hi, Hi Russell. Michelle. Um, and hello, everyone, and welcome to the show that nobody asked for. We nobody asked, and yet here are we are. So excited that you Enjoy. are here, and that we are here, and then we are doing a live show, and we have a guest named Eloise, which I love her name as much as Me I love too. her. I right? really love her name. We have a neighbor Crystal. whose little kid is named Eloise. Crystal. It's a great name. It's a great name. But we have well. we have just a couple of 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 little what are they called, Jamie? Hot topics. Before we bring in Eloise, our first one, which you may have found on our social page this morning. Can hear this story? Gay penguins are at it again. They stole chicks from lesbians. How dare they? <laughs> what is happening? Yeah, and they stole a nest too, which has to be like the first time that gay men stole anything housing related from lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> just saying <laughs> but, um, <laughs> did you see what i did there jamie did you see what i did there that was awful that was absolutely awful hello amanda but um what is up with what is up with the gays stealing our chicks i mean that doesn't happen well they weren't that. chicks they just stole the eggs they stole no, the they eggs stole maybe chicks oh, oh i they, thought they were eggs oh no maybe it was the eggs but there there had been an episode recently where Gay penguins also stole some chicks, but they were they were given back to the penguin family by the by whoever found them. But oh, they well, the, the zoo had to come in here and be like, um, all right, gays, lesbians, let's break it up. You get on your side, my side. What is um, it called when what is it called? Oh God, in foster care where they want to they they the goal is reunification. To, reunification. They had to reunify they had to reunify, re reunify. <laughs> That just tells you how much the gays want to be the parents that they were stealing chicks from the other gays. You know, like we kept it light on the social. We made a joke. But the truth of the matter is it just shows you how intentional us gay families are right there. Right there. Look at that. And um, also and also creative. go ahead, Jimmy. Sorry. Uh, intentional and creative because you know what? They figured it out. And also, we spent somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 minutes going back and forth and making sure we were writing the proper copy so that the gays didn't get mad at us lesbians. For we were like, is this going to be like, are the gays going to be like mad that we said this? And then we were like, oh, and then I was like, it's penguins. Just put it up. I was it's like, come on. It's a joke. We, but this is what happens. Like, you don't want to piss anybody off. And we have all this language now. And we have to be, we have to, we have to care about every, you know. So I didn't want to piss anyone off, but we ended up making it. And a I, I, just for the record, I never want to piss anyone off. <laughs> I just care a little bit less about it than you do, is all. It's true. And it's also, true. I was like, it's penguins. Like, there has to be some safe space. It's GD penguins. It's Can GD we penguins, for God's sake. A joke here, please. Anyway, the gay penguins, thank God they're out there. They stole some babies, There's some baby chicks, eggs. I love that it's just common knowledge now that they're out there. I remember when the Tango book came out and there was like that first story about these two gay penguins. And and then now it's all just like there's lesbian penguins and gay penguins. And it's just like, I love it. Everywhere. They I don't care. It. I think they're basically like pansexuals, the penguins. That's what they are. Pansexuals. Listen, I'm not getting involved in that. All right. Next. Penguin for Halloween. Hot topic. I mean, I'm I'm off my game. It's because we missed a week last week. Your poor son. We didn't even talk about that. Uh, we, talk, we talk about it on the podcast for next week. But yes, my son did get hit by a car. 
after my daughter got hit by a car, we can't even make it up, but you'll have to listen to the podcast on Monday because we talk about it in depth, but everybody is fine. Everybody's okay. It was more like, like he just got a big bump on his head and it was the trauma of all this kind of being like re-traumatized of like yeah. feeling unsafe. I but mean, um, yeah. I, how does that happen? It, two times in a row to the same family. Like, like <laughs> and, and also within a block of each other. And this was in front of our home. I mean, we live on a very busy intersection. So it is like, I guess maybe if it's going to happen there, it's going to happen. But I don't know. Let's Great. talk about, let's talk about our next hot topic, Jamie. Hot topic. You, you uh, emailed me this one. And I, that, but this was last week. So uh, you're going to have to, you're going to have to tell this. Okay. Story. All right. So I, my memory doesn't go that long. Okay. It'll come back. It, Sure doesn't. So there is, I'm looking at the article right now. There was a girl at a, a, a private Christian school in Oklahoma. She's a second grader. And apparently she told another little girl in the class that she had a crush on her. And the girl must have told the teacher or whatever. The teacher like came after the kid. Yeah. And and the, the mom got a call that was like, you need to, there was an incident on the playground. An incident on the playground. You need to come pick up your child. Right. So she comes and she finds out that the girl said she had a crush on this other girl and they sent her home. And they asked the mother, they asked the mother in this meeting, this is what's infuriating. They asked the mother, are you okay? Do you think same sex marriage is, is okay? Is acceptable? And the mom said she took a second and then she said, actually, yeah, I do. And I don't think there's a problem with that. And so they kicked the child out of the school kicked her out and refused to have any kind of a, a conversation with the family. They were just like, these are that you're not the type of people we want in the school. I, I mean, like on the other end, you shouldn't want to be in that school. Anyway. No, that's, no, that's terrible. That's no. hate. It's awful. But like, what the, what WTF? Are you kidding I know. me? I know. And you just, it's wow. like when you, you, when you think you get past something like that and it's just so upsetting that people can hide by it being a private school and they can get away with that crap. You know, it's like, it's like, where, where does it end then? You know, it's like, are we back, you know, are we back to, well, we, pro we probably never left it. I, I'm going to sound bad saying that, but like back to like country clubs that can say no Jewish people, no black people, no, like, yeah. uh, is that like, so you can say you can't even like express a crush, like the girls in second grade. I mean, it's awful. This poor girl, this poor girl. I think her teacher told her she was going to go to hell. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, and the, and the little girl was traumatized the little girl, because she was saying all this stuff about God doesn't like you. Right. And, yes. and, and, and the girl was like, and the girl was saying to her mother, like, do does God not like me? Does God not love me? And it's like, and the mom was just like, is this, this is the kind of values that you hold as a, as a Christian school. So it's just, I don't know. It's this. You're on, Jamie. Side, guys. you're on the wrong side. Yeah. Get off that side. You're on a dying horse. It's yeah. It's, it's, you, it's definitely you're not on the right side of history. You sure are not. Also, you just bad. That's just, you're a bad person. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm supposed to be more open-minded and I'm supposed to help you come to my side, but I just think you're a bad person. Like for, being so hate, for, for spreading hate. Yeah. You're a bad person. I don't yeah. even tell my daughter to like, my daughter's not even allowed to say the word stupid because it's a mean word. Like, you don't, yeah. Uh, we're you're te but, teaching your children. Ugh, ugh, no, uh, I mean, no God, no God that I believe in would ever say that you are not like loved. So that's yeah. it for me. Um, you, what does Amanda George have to say, Jamie? She says it's 2021. This is crazy. This kind of stuff is still happening. Agreed. I don't want my daughter growing up feeling less than because she has two moms. Same. I'm co-signing there. Oh co my God. Like how scary is that? I'm in a bubble. We're in a bubble. New we York are State. in a bubble. We're lucky. Hopefully they will never, but who knows? They're going to feel it at some point from yeah. somebody. Boy, we really brought it down before then we're going to be like, and our guest, Eloise. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, womp, womp, womp. Hi, Eloise. Hi. Hey. hey, ladies. <laughs> we Hi. Are, we yeah, are so at excited. excited. At least I was on this side. Like, yes, what the because mm -hmm. I would have kind of been a different kind of parent in probably choke term, but like, is that Jesus like? <laughs> <laughs> Eloise, I want you to know before you tell everyone about who you are, that you are our first guest to get an exclamation point. Well, goddamn. Well, thank you. God. Yeah, because that was blast for me too, wasn't it? Yeah, but that's okay. God because damn. you know what? Oh, yeah. We're 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 gay. So we're oh, just, okay. and I'm, so we're both fucked. There we go. <laughs> fucked. 
Eloise, uh, will you tell everyone about yourself? I know you're delightful. Jamie knows you're delightful, but we need everyone else to know it too. Tell us about yourself. Well, thank you, ladies. I appreciate you um, allowing me the time to be on your show. Um, again, my name is Eloise Drain, and I um, am the owner of Family Inceptions, which is a full-service surrogacy and egg donation agency in the Atlanta area. And I have personally been a donor six times. I've been a surrogate three times, and I've been a kidney donor. So top that. Right? Wow. Six egg time donor, three times surrogate, one time kidney donor. I mean, like you are the mic. like you just you should just leave the pot use this live stream and be like, bye. Bye. <laughs> Holy I've done my deeds for life. So there oh my you go. God. You, well, you know what they always say? Everybody we interview who who works with um surrogates is everybody says that surrogates are like unicorns and you know you're in the presence of a surrogate when you meet one because there's just something they give off that is just pure just like you just give like you're just a giver a unicorn you're 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 you're, you're, you're mythical <laughs> <laughs> well thank you <laughs> we love you well thank you i love you guys too thank you i appreciate it but yes i um Started the agency 13 years ago, and I was actually the first agency in the state of Georgia. And then I am one of only four, I believe there is now, maybe five Black-owned agencies out of 200 in the country. What? Yeah. What? It's not really why is that? I mean, let's get into that. Like, why do you think that is? Life bringer and oh, life it really does. Yeah, it really goes back to um, infertility issues with um, the black and brown community and women of color dealing with infertility. And this just not being a, a, a thing that we do, honestly. Um, when I first applied to be an egg donor 20 years ago, I was told that black women didn't have infertility issues. And um, what? Yeah, yeah. So this I was, was in like 2000. Yes. Um, 1999, the end of 1999 to be exact. And a um, professional person told you that. Yes, an agency out of, out of California. Yep. Told me that black women didn't have any, any infertility issues. And I didn't really know any different, to be honest, because I already had three children myself. I didn't know anybody around me in my circle that had surrogacy, um, that had uh, fertility issues. And so I was like, oh, okay, well, I mean, if anybody ever, you know, reaches out to you and is interested, let me know. Um, right. And contacted me about nine, 10 months later. It was a horrible experience, but that's a different story. And then, um, then, yeah, I donated. And after I did my first donation, because it was a horrible experience, I was like, mm, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to do that again. But then a couple of years later, I ended up finding a website that had classified ads for people looking for egg donors and surrogates. And I decided to put my information out there. And then within two hours, I had so many emails of black women looking for donors. That's when I realized. For their friends, for their white friends, because yes. they don't have infertility right. issues. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Wow. Wow. First, but first I do want to take it back and I want to know why it was such a terrible experience. Sure. For egg donor. Yeah. So um, the agency matched me. They sent me uh, medication to my house and pretty much told me, here's your cycle schedule. Here's when you need to take medication. Um, and you need to be in this state on this date. We'll send you a plane ticket. That was it. No one, no one explained to me. I mean, they told me that I had to take shots, but no one explained at the time, again, 20 years ago, uh, that the hormones that you had to take, you actually had to mix the, the medication yeah. together mm -hmm. first and then uh, use your syringe to take it out and then have to sit there and now give myself a shot. I like, hello. Uh, there was no Google to figure out or YouTube to oh, figure right. out what the hell, how am I supposed to take the shot? I so no one was available. I completely forgot about the mixing. I went through a lot yeah. of infertility. I have, you just reminded me about yeah. like, you were like doing a science experiment yeah. on your kitchen counter. Yeah. And thank God I was, it, first of all, my, uh, the nurse at my fertility agency showed it to me the first time. And then I was able to Google people doing it for me so I could copy them. That's crazy. 
Mm-hmm. And, and I mean, normally you would be seeing a doctor at various points and they would be advising you and talking to you. So they just were like mailing you crap and just being like, you got this. Well, I did have to see a doctor after day five or six of starting the medication, but there was nobody there to help me with the whole process. Oh um, that doctor was only there to monitor me. And then um, when I was ready, they were like, all right, well, go to the state. So I traveled. I got on a plane. It was Labor Day weekend of 2000. Um, got on a plane, got there. The nurse uh, picked me up at the airport um, and told me she will pick me up at 7 a.m. the next morning. She came, picked, mind you, I was at the hotel by myself. I couldn't bring anybody with me. Um, so she picked me up at 7 a.m., took me for my retrieval. They retrieved 27 eggs, um, let me rest for 45 minutes, dropped me back off at the hotel door and said, call a taxi and go home tomorrow on your flight. Oh, and handed me a check for $3,000 and said, thank you. Would I've never heard from them again? They, it's like they treated you. I mean, first first of all, they should like be- Like they farmed you. you. Yeah, Exactly. But they should be treating you like this. You, you should be exalted for what you're doing. You're yeah, doing like precious so cargo. Beautiful. And they treated you like Robin said. Like, I, that's, cr- do you think that's because you were a black woman? Or do you think that's just in No, general? I think that was just the ignorance, honestly, of people who don't really realize that these egg donors and surrogates don't actually have to be an egg donor or a surrogate. Yeah. And even though they're choosing to do it, yes, they are getting compensated. However, they still don't need to. Right. Yeah. You need them more than they need you. True. So that's the whole thing of that people just don't understand when, you know, clients come in. I actually had one gentleman one time tell me, um, I mean, we're just paying her. She just carries the baby and, you know, she gets her money and we get our baby. Like, what's the big deal? I wanted to jump through the damn phone first. Um, given that with my own three surrogacy experiences, they were crazy. My first, um, I delivered one vaginally, one C-section within an hour of each other. And then I ended up getting Bell's palsy for 30 days where my face was paralyzed for 30 days. Oh my my second one, I had reoccurring UTIs for a her- whole year. No one knew why. And then my third one, I ended up having to have an emergency hysterectomy. Oh, no. Yeah. Why Why did you keep going? Why did you keep doing it again? I'm a fool. <laughs> because you're a giver because you're a life giver i'm, a fool, I'm gonna put this up i'm gonna the reason you kept doing it is because you are eloise life bringer life saver <laughs> well thank you i appreciate that um yeah well my husband probably wouldn't have said that at the time because he was like <laughs> what i mean when i first went to him and i told him and again i'm married to a black man so and I, we're going to get into detail about um women of color and infertility but it's not just women of color. I mean, the community as a whole, when it comes to fertility, it's a secretive thing. No one talks about it. This is not something that you sit down to with your family members and your grandparents or your aunts or your uncles or your parents and have a conversation about your fertility. I was embarrassed to talk to my mom when I first got my period. Right. Yeah. So, you know, this not was not a thing. So, <laughs> you know, I went to my husband and I was like, yeah, so I want to be a surrogate. He was like, what? <laughs> it took a year. It took a year for him to finally get on board. When he got on board, wow. With me being a surrogate, yeah. Uh, and then I carried for a heterosexual the first time. Uh, actually, my first two um, couples were uh, straight, and then my last couple was a same-sex couple. Yeah, it's interesting that you bring up that it's this something that we don't talk about a lot. We it's mm-hmm. not something that's talked about. Fertility is not mm-hmm. something that's talked about. And then when you come to the LGBTQ community, we can't get work. pregnant without talking about our fertility and yep. bringing br- and 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 li- like literally has to be out there. There is there is no question that we use somebody else to help us get pregnant, and we went to a doc or we did whatever we had to do mm-hmm. to get pregnant, which makes it so it makes it even harder for this community to talk about it because Mm -hmm. nobody wants to talk about it and it's like right and so if it's hard already hard for your community to talk about it so and then it's probably even harder for a black woman yes to have that you guys aren't infertile yeah no um i mean so my niece is lesbian and her and her partner they've been together four or five years whatever and um 
it has been topic of conversation because you know me and I'm like, so, you know, are you guys going to like pick a sperm donor or you, you know, do you need help? I, I can, you know, I too will help you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I'm good. <laughs> You're like, I'm Eloise, life bringer, life saver. So, whatever you need, you yeah. tell me what you need. And I yeah, it's you. like, yeah, no, um, I'm all set, Auntie. Uh, I, but I'll know what I need to do when we're ready, but we're not there yet. So, I mean, if she's only 27, she's not, like, she got some time. Yeah, time. but time. No, you know, but I want them to know, like, you don't have to figure this out on your own. You know, you're not in one of those areas or in those stages of life, thank God, where you don't have family that's surrounding you and they could care less. And they're more than willing to say, okay, you know what, this is what you need to do. This is where you need to go. This is who you need to see, whatever. Um, and so, so yeah, I think for a lot of people, the older they are too, the more difficult it is to have those conversations. And, and then, you know, then to be, a lesbian, especially to be a lesbian and then figure out later on in life that you have infertility issues when you finally decide that, you know, okay, I want to have a child. Yeah. And thinking, oh, I'm good, you know, but would you really know otherwise? No, yeah, no. Exactly, because we don't talk about it and we keep our legs closed as long as we can. We're taught, you know, stop, Rob. You know, like we're taught to keep our legs closed. Don't get pregnant. Don't get pregnant. Don't get pregnant. Yes. Yes. You know, and then, and then when it's even time to it, yeah. even in school, sex education, sex education is about not getting pregnant. Sex education yeah. is not about reproduction. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I yep. have a friend. I have a friend. She's actually a person of color and she, she, she just was telling me that she's having a hard time getting pregnant. It's been really tough. And I, you know, all I can say is I'm here for you. I love you, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but it's such a, ter it's such a hard struggle when you get to that place and this is your last chance and you know it might not happen so it's but there's options there's always options for us that's right that's right well can we talk a little bit about the the issue that you were just talking about like that like I, we, Linda of Jana and Linda, who was on the podcast, wrote an article for the Times about Black women and and care around pregnancy, and and it's yeah. like, is that part of why you got into the business? And and can you talk a little bit about that issue in general? Yeah, so I I would definitely say the care is completely different. Matter of fact, two days ago, three days ago, I don't know what day are we on. We're on today's Thursday. Thursday. Monday. Thursday. Second. <laughs> I had a consult with a black family that was looking to do surrogacy. And we got on the topic of, you know, the criteria that you're looking for in a surrogate, so on and so forth. And they specifically said, well, we don't want a black woman. I said, why? And he said, because we're afraid of for her in the medical care that she would receive. Oh, and I was like, huh. Okay. Now, it would be different in the surrogacy world because the medical professions know that there's somebody else on the other side paying attention to what's going on. And she has an advocate for her on the back end. Whereas yeah. if you are not advocating for yourself and you don't have that information, then really what difference does it make? I'm in, you know, and hopefully people don't take this the wrong way, but quite honestly, I feel like there's a lot of people in the U S who can give two fucks about black people. Um, hello, let's look at who we just had in office for the last yeah. four years. If you really right cared ahead. anything about black people, you would have never voted for his ass in the first place. Thank you. So that's first thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it's just a perpetual thing. It's not just affecting us in the here and now. It's affecting long term. It's affecting our children. And it's going to affect my the children's children. And it's kind of like everybody wants to talk about it, but nobody is doing anything to make the change. Right. You can talk about it all day long. What, what good is it going to do? If you're not willing to make the change, if you're not willing to put the your money where your mouth is, America, what we'll, what is it going to change? It's not. No. Black women are dying the highest rate of any other counterpart in this country when it comes to maternal health. Uh, matter of fact, and it's not even where you can't be educated. There was a recent um, uh, woman who was a, a doctor herself who recently died um, at delivery when she was telling the doctor 
she was feeling issues and having problems or whatever and this, that, and the other. They disregarded what she said and this woman died. And she was educated. So, she was a doctor. I read about that. That one was yes. heartbreaking. Yes, yes. And and this is, you know, 2000. I mean, 2020, 2021, like what the fuck? We should not be here at this point in life, but we are because again, it goes back to what value do people really give to black people? What value? I mean, we built this country. We, hell, we built the damn capital that they stormed on the 6th of January and they allowed everybody in. But when Black Lives Matter was there, you know, seven, eight months before then, I mean, the whole army was there. So oh, yeah. it's kind of like, you know, you can't, you can you really expect any different? Yeah. No, it's, it's really, really, really in the past couple of years. I mean, it's been forever. It's been in the past couple of years, it's really been unearthing itself in a nasty, ugly way. Like we're really, really starting to see it, which is good that we're seeing it. But well, Jamie, like, us white people are seeing it. I think, I think yeah, 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 exactly. I think black people saw it all along and exactly. yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And I feel like I was guilty of before Trump of saying things aren't as bad as they used to be and saying like, and I, and remember, Oh my God, I'm going to get upset. I'm sorry. Um, but I remember thinking that and it's like, and then when Trump came to office and he, he just gave voice to all these people and all that hatred and it, it didn't, he didn't create it. Mm -hmm. He gave them license to bring it into the open. Yep. And that is what was so upsetting about it. And, and what was upsetting is that I wasn't there earlier, that I didn't get there earlier. I mean, it's better to get there, but like, it's just, and, and like, now what? Mm -hmm. I know. You know, now what? Mm -hmm. But you know, and I get, and I, a lot of people do start saying that now what, but it really goes back to these professionals who are in these industries to begin acknowledging that there is a problem and to start actually paying attention. Hmm. You know, that's the thing. A lot of these professionals, medical doctors or whatever, um, you know, there's this silent um, thing, I think, in the medical profession that um, black women um, are not just black women, but black people in general, we have a higher tolerance for pain. Yes. We, uh, you know, we can handle more. We're we're stronger. We're because we have to be. Right. That's you why have be. we have to be. We have to be stronger, or we're going to get fucked over. Yeah. Sorry, I know I keep dropping these f bombs. Oh, you go ahead. Um, but we we keep getting fucked over because we're we're saying hello, pay attention. These problems are occurring. They're not one off things. They're not you know just happening to the poor. They're or the middle class or whatever. It's happening across the board. So. Thanksgiving Day, my daughter um, ended up going to the emergency room. Somehow, some way, her ovary twisted in with her fallopian tube. We just what? woke up one day, is in severe pain, and um, ended up going to the hospital. She um, lives in Atlanta. She's in law school, and so she doesn't live home. Ca texts me at 7 o'clock in the morning and says, I'm in the hospital. They think it's a kidney stone. Um, but I'm in a lot of pain and, um, you know, I'll be in touch. Okay. I've had kidney stones. It's not pleasing. Um, but fine. But hours and hours and hours go by and I don't hear from her. So finally I call and I'm like, what the hell is going on? Oh, come to find out it was never a kidney stone. It was her ovary that twisted into her fallopian tube and they had to get it untwisted. And it was going to probably take about five hours of surgery to get it done, which it did. Um, but you know what her saving grace was, is that she had really good insurance. Thank God. Thank God. But why? Right. But why? If she walked in the door as a black girl, mm -hmm with no insurance, mm. would they really have spent the time her exactly and given her the care that she actually needed? Or would they have said, well, let's go ahead and just remove your ovary because it's going to save us more time. Right. Right. Okay. And it's less for insurance. So, you know, do you think that 
<sighs> these problems are straight up racism or unconscious bias or or systemic issues with the medical industry. Like you just said, like it's a business and they want to save money on the insurance front or all of the above. Oh, it's all. It's, it's all. all of the above. I mean, if you think about history, um, going back to slavery, mm -hmm. women, you were, you were considered a good slave if you could reproduce. Mm-hmm. If you could not reproduce, what good were you? Man or woman. So if they had infertility issues, do you really think that they were going to share that information? And then, you know, the world changed uh, and we gradually became more educated. We, you know, removed slavery or whatever. But this systemic um, racism that exists is just a different form of slavery. Be what? Because they don't call it slavery, so it's no longer slavery. It's the same thing. And it's been the same generation through generation. Why? Because it's the previous generation that's educating the medical professionals right now. What are they telling them? What are they teaching them? What does the textbook say? Do you really think the textbooks are telling them about the difference between a, a Black woman's plight is going to be different than a white woman's plight. A lesbian woman is going to deal differently than a straight woman. A black man for sure already has a noose around his neck before he's even won. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's these type of things that until we as a society, number one, recognize it, which people are starting to, but there's still a lot of people like, eh, you know, I mean, you guys are just making a big deal out of nothing because it's, you're not living it. Or pull right. yourself up by your bootstraps. Right. Yeah. And it, like like what Robin said, like it took, you know, it's always been there, but even Robin and I were late coming to the party. Like, yeah, we know it happens, but it's not that. It can't be that bad, you know? It's like, not as bad as it used to be. It's not as bad as it used to be. And it took, uh, it took these past four years for us to really see, oh, shit, this mm -hmm. is bad. But, mm -hmm. you know, and we're like, we try to stay on, keep our... What is it that's saying? Pull, finger on the pulse. And like, I was like, I don't know where you're going. Right no, you never, nobody ever knows where I'm going. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. But it really is a shame and it's unfortunate. And like I said, when it comes to fertility, it's even worse. So, um, because, you know, a lot of people can't afford fertility services. Yeah. Um, and it's just astronomically expensive. Insurance don't pay for shit. Um, and I mean, Georgia is one of the worst states for when it comes to insurance for anything, uh, let alone any kind of fertility care. It's horrible. It doesn't matter if you're straight, gay, blue, green, yellow, it doesn't matter. Um, state of Georgia sucks. Yeah. And it is unfortunate that there isn't anything in place because the society thinks that the only reason or the only way that you should be able to have a child is the traditional way man sleeps with woman, he injects his sperm, she gets pregnant and ba boom, baby is here. And it's just like, no, that's not how the world is. Sorry. Not anymore. No, no, update. No. We need an update. Yeah. <laughs> and again, going back to those textbooks and getting those medical professionals educated from early and not only medical professionals, us even educating our own children. Yeah. When my daughter, unlike my, you know, parents, when my daughter turned 10, 11, and I started seeing she was, you know, getting breasts and everything else, I'm like, okay, let's start having these conversations, you know, and having the conversation of, that it's an okay thing. These are the things that are going to happen. These are the changes that are going to happen to your body. This is what you should expect. If you don't see this, there's a problem. You need to let me know. You know, and same thing for my nieces and same thing for my nephews. It's like having these conversations from when they're early is what we as the parents need to start taking responsibility on. And not just parents, but just even people in general, the school, education. Like stop teaching you know, sex education is only about make sure you don't get pregnant. Yes. Sex education is not teaching them about their reproduction and what things they need to be looking out for and what things they should be concerned about so that when they're 29 and 30 years old, they're not coming to us for a surrogate. Yeah. Right. Right.
Yeah, and there's mm. nothing. There's no. There's no freedom in it. There's no like loving your body, loving who no. you are. There's mm. nothing. There's none remember, of that. Just my just sex don't education do this. was our sex education in San Francisco was really, really intense. But they taught us basically how not to get pregnant, and they taught us the 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 sexually transmitted diseases we could get from having sex, and they went into detail about yeah. STDs. Yeah. So just try to scare 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 yeah. you straight. Don't have sex. Yeah. Scare you straight. Yeah. Yeah. See what I did there. I see. <laughs> but it's crazy. I, you know, I'm reading, um, it's taking me a long time to read a book because I have a three-year-old, but I've been reading the underground Ra railroad by Colson mm -hmm. Whithead recently. Mm -hmm. And I'm just to the part where th the systemic, like, um, it, when they, uh, oh my God, what, when they neuter women, what is it called? What am oh, I sterilized. Sterilized. Yeah. Thank you. I'm, I'm, words are not coming to me. My cheese off, um, where the, he, the, the so 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 these people finally make it out of slavery. They make it to the north, and then are systemically getting sterilized by the good white people in the north. Yes. Did just, you know that in North Carolina there is still a pending case right now in 2021 for when they were sterilizing women in North Carolina, and there's still pending cases, and the government still doesn't want to pay these people, but. You know, but we don't have a problem here. And, no, and by the way, they, well, all those no news stories broke when they were doing that to people crossing the border. Yes, the history. You know, they were sterilizing them. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God! Like yeah. Think, so and, and, much it, needs to change. Yeah. You know, but but it, the only thing is like about our country, and this makes me feel better and not really better. But like in like the eighties, like they were doing eugenics in in Sweden. It's like it's we're not the only country struggling with this. Yeah. Um, so that at least is maybe positive. It's like a global thing. I don't. That's not positive. No, but no, it's. It, but okay, think of it this way: for Jewish people in the Holocaust, was it okay anywhere? Whether it was Germany, whether it was, you know, Austria, no, where, it's wherever they had them, exactly. Yeah. And I, what I don't understand is why don't people put the Holocaust and slavery in the same category? Because it was. It yeah. was yeah. the same category. Yes. So what? Because they were white skinned and we're black skinned? It, it, it doesn't warrant the same, you know, um, angriness and response, and, and, yeah. and the response yeah it's just like are you kidding me it's the same damn thing and we did ours for 400 years exactly. it, it's That's the equivalent it's the equivalent the people with the confederate flags if you were still flying a third reich flag in in germany today it's the it's the equivalent of that like i like anyone who's flying a confederate flag you can't even give me one reason how you could do that mm -hmm. you but, know you're yeah. it, they're the same you, anytime you're trying to like like make a, a population extinct. It's, it's the same. It's a whole. They're, a they're out there using those Confederate flags to break down our capital, mm -hmm. and they didn't even get shot. They didn't get any. If that was they didn't get tased, people, they didn't get shot, and then they, they want to sit there and talk about Blue Lives Matter. You don't give two fucks about Blue. No, lives. you killed. You killed three or four of them. Okay. Yeah, you've seen you the footage about you know. screaming at the cops. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, and some of those blue lives people just took the took the the thing and just slid it to the side so they could come in. Yeah, like it. yeah, it's well, oh God, so much has to change. Eloise, you you've opened. I mean, you're just thank you. Sorry, so much. <laughs> no, I mean, don't you dare be sorry, <laughs> Eloise, with an exclamation point. About surrogacy. <laughs> what? Well, what I wanted to ask, I did want to bring it back to that a little bit, and I wanted to ask you if your experience, your negative experience when you donated eggs that first time, if if the experience of like people telling you black women don't have infertility, did all these things in some way contribute to you being like, I'm starting this agency, and God oh, damn it, I'm going to help some people? Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. I um, actually, I wanted to start the agency officially in, in 20. 2005. Um, but then I found out I was pregnant with my youngest son. And then I was trying to finish my master's degree and I was working a full-time job and I had three kids and I was married. So eh, yeah, probably not. You know, a couple things on your plate. Yeah, no. Um, and so I then decided to work for an agency and that's where I learned about surrogacy from them. Um, and just saw the 
shit that was going on in that agency. And, you know, and then of course, with my first experience with egg donation, I'm like, okay, I can definitely do something better. But in 2007, the state of Georgia was trying to pass a, pa a parenthood bill um, so that they could pretty much dictate who can do whatever with their fertility. Luckily, it didn't pass. Um, but I had to wait another year until we knew for sure that it wasn't going to pass. And then that's when I started the agency. But my whole thing with my agency, number one, I wanted to have an agency that was we're based on diversity and inclusion. Um, because that was my thing for me was that I, um, as I mentioned before, I have a niece who's a lesbian and I have a nephew who is trans. And I want to give them the opportunities so that no one can tell them, well, you no, you can't be a dad. No, you can't be a mom. Like, fuck you. Yes, the hell they're going to. If that's what they choose, yes, they absolutely will. And then I also wanted to give the ability to these women who are choosing to be surrogates and choosing to be donors a voice, you know, it's not, I am choosing to do this for you. I am choosing to help you. Do not take me for granted. Seriously. Do not take me, do not, you know, because you're giving me compensation, that, that doesn't mean anything. I am still allowing you to use my body. I am choosing yes. to. I'm not being exploited like a lot of people out there, right wing, you know, surrogacy is exploitation of women. Don't being a donor, you're being exploited, whatever. These women are choosing to do this of their own free will. But at the same time, they do. Somebody has to be able to say, no, no, intended parent. That is not right. And right. this is the reasons why it's not right. No intended parent. You can't tell her where she can go and what she can do and how she can eat and what she. No, no, no. She's still a human being. It doesn't matter that she's carrying your child. You didn't buy no, her. Exactly. Yes. You did not exactly. buy her. But now on the flip side. We also tell these in surrogates that, you know, these people, a lot of them have spent thousands upon thousands upon thousands, hundreds of thousands, thousands to have a child. And you also have to put yourself in their perspective. And I think that is what is wrong with this country is nobody is willing to see the other person's perspective. Yes. Until then it hits them in the face. And then they were like, oh, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. As an intended parent, you know, can you imagine me, we're meeting together for the first time and I'm going to go to you and say, Jamie, I'm going to take your son for the next nine months. You can't see him. You can't talk to him. You can't touch him. You can't tell me how to treat him. You can't tell me what to feed him. You can't tell me anything. I'll just bring him back to you in nine months healthy and whole. Like I will kill for mine. Okay. I got, yes. I got five kids. So cool. in total, I have delivered eight babies. Damn. And yeah, I've delivered eight. So I have four of my own. And then I have a um, uh, another one that I didn't give birth to, but she's mine. It's my husband's daughter. And, um, and then I delivered a total of four surrogacy babies. Damn. And yeah, and I... I, I will cut you over mine. <laughs> <laughs> I will cut you. I will cut yes, you. You're not exactly. taking my baby for nine months. Exactly. Exactly. Oh. So now you're going to these intended parents. This is their only option. They don't have another option. Yeah. Um, and they do have to put all their trust and faith in you. So again, it's everybody has to see the other person's perspective. You can't yeah. just keep thinking with a narrow mind, like, the only vision that's out there is your vision. Like, right. no, that's why they wear glasses. Yeah. Right. I'll tell you what, if I was an egg donor, a surrogate, an intended parent, I would want you driving the train. I actually just want you driving my train always. That's I know. Because <laughs> you're just like a badass and I could see you standing up for everybody, but at the same time being like, no, check yourself. Yeah. You're out of line. Now you're out of line. You two come together. Like, and yeah. it's like, I, I just, I'm so glad that you're running it's an agency. Much. Yeah. Yes, me too. You're such a good advocate. Ellie. Yeah. Will you tell everybody the name of your agency? Cause we should also tell them that you have a podcast too. Like oh, you are the hardest work, working woman in show business yes. and in the egg business. So yes. tell everybody about the agency and about your podcast and where, and all the things about you, where they okay. can get you. So uh, the agency is called family inceptions. Uh, the podcast is uh, at, um, sorry, my podcast is fertility cafe. Um, and you can find that anywhere. Um, and family inceptions, um, 
the social media is at Family Inceptions, I guess. Yes. I'm not very it much is. on social media. Jamie's like, it is. <laughs> I just tagged you in the post, so it is. Yes. Um, and then I also, I don't know if you can see that, Saronique. Um, so going back to, you know, putting kind of where um, the importance of making sure everybody is taken care of, we created a subscription box for surrogates. Yeah, that's what the that's what those boxes back there. Oh, are. that's awesome. Um, oh, um, and then one more thing, we also have surrogacy roadmap, which is an online course that we created for families going independently who can't afford to work with an agency. But my oh. thing is, I rather educate you so that you do it properly and you protect yourself, so that you're not calling me like this woman who called me yesterday and said that she had somebody carry a pregnancy for her, used her genetic material they didn't have a contract and now she's trying to get her child yep this is still happening oh geez yeah. oh. wow well good for you that's yeah. for creating that roadmap because when you want to have a kid you want to have a kid and if you don't have the money you're going to figure out a way to do it and and sometimes you're going to cut corners yeah no, yeah. and this it's is not you want to cut corners. No. no. Oh, God. Well, Eloise, you have been amazing. We're so glad you joined us today. I'm so glad we got hooked up with you. I do. love you. I love you. And I know. You know, also, I know, like these conversations, we need to keep having these conversations. Yeah. We need yes, to keep we we, it. Has to, these conversations have to happen over and over again. And yep. maybe someday things are going to change. Yeah. yeah. And we have to be willing to just listen because it's not always our turn to talk. And we have to be listened to like, we have to be willing to like, I'm willing to make a mistake and say something I shouldn't say and be told next time, please don't say that. Cause that's, uh, that's the only way I'm going to learn. Yeah. Yep. This, yep. this, Absolutely. this country's a work in progress. OMG. Just yeah. like Jamie and I. Just like my chief. Oh, my chief is a mess. Oh, Eloise, I don't think you're, I don't think you're a work in progress, Ella, oh, Eloise. You only know. <laughs> well, thank I, you so much. I to dress today. So that's just showing you. We <laughs> have on a real know. shirt and I actually, know. you know, I didn't Jamie, do my hair because it was Jamie and I were wearing real shirts too. I put, I had a t-shirt on and I was like, no, I'm going to wear a nicer shirt for God's sake. Blouse on because know, this is like a nice little sweater. I was like, look at this. Yeah, yeah, who are you? <laughs> Why the hell are you going to put clothes on? Who the hell is going to see me? But I, now, I still have sweatpants on the bottom. I had yeah, a rude awakening when I, I when I put these that jeans part. on. I'm wearing jeans, and I had a rude awakening. They are so tight. <laughs> <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't put on pants with a buckle in a long time. Don't do oh. it. Don't do it till you have to. Yeah, oh, I'm about to take them off. Yeah. No well, way. thank you, <laughs> thank you so much for stopping by, Eloise. We thank love you, ladies. I appreciate it. All right. Oh God, that was, oh, that was, I feel like exhausted. That was so amazing. She is yeah, amazing. amazing. I love her. Um, she's my, she's guys, my new hero. Yeah. You guys um, check her out, send people to her. Um, Family Inceptions in Georgia. Um, yeah. And uh, you know, Rate and review her podcast, which I believe is called Fert Cafe Fert Fertility Cafe. Fertility, Fertility Cafe. Cafe. Rate and review her podcast while you're rating and reviewing our podcast. While you're at the Google and the uh, Amazon rating, reviewing our book, but just do all those things. Just go make yourself a cocktail, sit down, and then be like, "I got it. I got it. This one cocktail. I'm going to finish it, and I'm going to rate and review everybody during all of that." You're going to do all that. You're going to do all that. Make sure you get send uh, Eloise some love. How yes. You can. Did I ask for too much, Jamie? I probably I, did, didn't you I? You always do. Welcome to my world. <laughs> I, whoa, that got that went dark real, real fast, Jamie. On that Listen, note. He's, he's taking it to a dark place. That's it. That's all we've got. Wow. We I, love you guys. We um We missed you last week. I'm so glad we're back together again. Together again. What is that? Da, 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 da. Um, and, and also, and also listen to Monday's podcast where Sam Harris makes fun of Jamie for only knowing the very beginning of it. the song. And she just did it now. And he just he heard her do it once. He called her out on it and then he just made fun of her. And I laughed so hard. And it's Sam Harris, the first winner of Star Search. It's gonna be such a good episode. We loved him so much. He was so he was you guys, I can't wait. This week's episode is fantastic. I mean, I love them all, but this week's so good. Yeah. And next week is so exciting. I'm so excited for everybody to hear it. Um so much I good stuff. Messed up the lyric. It's together at last. It's not even together again. So just, I just stop yourself, Jamie. Just stop yourself. 
Just stop yourself. All right, everybody, eggs. Um, yes, Rebecca, everybody's good. Thank you so much. Look, I look, Rebecca's taking my job of like I continuing. I know. Rebecca, stop it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and we're gonna say eggs. Ovaries. And do you remember the last word, Jamie? Out. <laughs> <laughs>